an interest rate as we promised. Here's where they triple. The rest of this stuff, I don't think a lawyer can read this. It protects us. Make sure we get your home when you can't pay us back. Such a lovely house. Yeah. But don't worry. We're going to sell you credit life insurance. You don't really need it, but... It puts lots of cash in our pockets. You look nervous. We better hurry and get you to sign. Or... I'll pretend to ruin your credit with one phone call. Predatory lenders are never this easy to spot. Call us and protect yourself with the facts. Every day, online predators make their way into homes uninvited and unnoticed. Help delete online predators. To learn what you can do to protect your kids' online life, visit CyberTipline.com. And we're back again. We thank you for staying tuned. We are uh, uh, going to uh, get an announcement. Yeah. From, uh, uh, D.K. Smith, he has an announcement. Right, from the First Pilgrims Baptist Church, uh, Dr. Eugene Mitchell, Reverend Dr. Eugene Mitchell, pastor at 1228 Art Street. Now, what's going to happen is their annual Women's Day is uh, Sunday, May the 6th, and the times are from, let's see, there's a 7.45 a.m. service, guest speaker, Lady C C Sarita Walker from the Central City Christian Fellowship, and then 11 a.m. service, the guest speaker will be uh, Minister Joyce Arve, and she's from the Law Street Baptist Church. And, of course, all women are invited. Plus, there's a pre-annual Women's Day. Well, that's past. It's Saturday. But this is, that's, that's on Saturday. But on Sunday, it's all going to be taking place 7.45 a.m. and at 11 a.m. Again, at the First Pilgrims Baptist Church, 1228 Art Street, Reverend Dr. Eugene Mitchell, Pastor. And, of course, we thank Sister Sandra Metz, uh, communications coordinator, whoever, whatever her title is. We thank Sister Sandra Public Metz. Public relations. Public relations. We thank Sister Sandra Metz for passing that information on. Now, speaking of information, and we're talking with Dr. Key. You called her Celeste. I call her Dr. Key. I'm yeah. sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, that's okay. That's okay. So, uh, that is her first name. That, I know. That's her first name. correct people when they say Miss Key, because I'm like, I earned that degree. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Five years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, Dr. Key. <laughs> so the, um, I wanted to go back and then come back up for the when you were here last time. Who's the school that you were teaching at with the suitcases and everything? I was actually working with a, a community arts program through Ashe Cultural Arts Center. Okay. Um, on Aretha Castle Haley, they right. have a program called the Kuumba Institute, which mm -hmm. was designed to introduce children to the African cultural arts. And so the project that we were doing was um, it was about student identity and so we gave them all kinds of materials and just things that we had found all over the place fabric paint found objects and we asked them if you could fit your life story in a suitcase what would you put in it and how would you represent yourself and these children were from ages 5 to 14 mm. so you can imagine with little kids with the, the um, glue guns and the, <laughs> the scissors and everything we had um, six Dillard students who were fine art students who were working mm -hmm. with the children on the project and they did a really fantastic job even with the youngest children to help them make their um, life stories visible and we were thinking about it children in New Orleans have moved around a lot you know schools opening closing with Katrina all of that they've been through so much disruption sometimes in their lives what would they take with them if they could take something with them to show everyone who they are as people um, and they could carry that suitcase through their life and so we had them do that through art um, and they did it they did their own art show at um, the gal at a gallery I think you visited yeah, the would, gallery yeah it. yeah and they all got to talk about their work to people who visited the gallery and it was their opportunity to kind of see what, how professional artists show their work um, and it was it was just it was we loved the working with them and it was a beautiful project and I just want to make sure that you know, teachers now have those resources and things they need to keep doing those those projects. Well, did you see any potential in some of these young kids, uh, especially five years old and growing up and stuff mm -hmm. like that? You see any potential that that probably they say, well, 
or are you going to make art your career? Because it, it, that's a decision. Absolutely, you know, yeah. I, I know a lot of starving artists, mm -hmm, <laughs> mm -hmm. and, and and they they you know they're, they're committed to their art, and they 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 some of them make it real real good, but some of them say, you know, it, it is what it is, and, and, yeah, and yeah. this is what I this, this is my expression and stuff like. And that. actually, that's interesting because one of the things that we do is we do professional development, and some of the. Pro some of the programs we've had are for teach for artists, for teaching artists to help them build if they want to go into teaching. So a lot of studio artists might struggle kind of to make a living just with their art, but if they could go in and work with children and teach art, that, that, that helps the them kind of, of pay the bills yeah, while yeah, they're doing yeah, their yeah. work. So we're we, trying to find resources for artists who want to teach so that they have those skills to go okay. in. We can put that number out again. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, both, yeah. I, I'm going to put my stick art together and The number we put out, but also when <laughs> I said the past, let's look ahead in the future. What you have coming up, what's coming up with the um, Arts for Care, Arts for Core, I'm sorry. Um, arts are Core, this is something, so Arts are Core is something I like to say because people in schools see the arts almost as lanyap. Like it's something on the side that the kids <laughs> do once they finish the real work, we see it as part of their core curriculum. Like children need it. Um, something um, Pastor Williams said earlier, how, it, how what it does in a child's mind and spirit to be able to express themselves artistically, we've seen that. And so we want to make sure that ch every child gets that experience, whether or not they become a professional artist. Because not only do the arts help children who become artists, they help children who don't become artists because they grow creativity um, and they grow self-confidence and self-expression from practicing art. Um, I think there was a survey done by IBM of all the CEOs. It was the biggest global survey they've ever done of CEOs. They asked all the CEOs, what is the number one top leadership skill in business that people need? And they said creativity. Right? Being able to think outside the box and think creatively. So even children who don't go on to become professional artists or musicians can really benefit by that exposure. Um, so some of the things we're working on right now, we are making a resource directory of organizations and museums who, are, who have services and programs for children. So teachers and parents can find those really easily. They can find an after school program or they can find a field trip. So we definitely want to have any, if you have an organization or curriculum resources or something in the arts you want to share with schools, please call us or email us so we can put that in our directory and teachers and parents can, can find you. Well, um, I, I'm excited because uh, uh, basically I, you know, I, I have a deep appreciation for art, but I, I was in college and, and remembering some you know, famous orders and the orders that got my mm -hmm. attention was uh, Vincent Van Gogh and the Starry Night yes, and stuff like that. Piece, so, yeah. You know, somebody said, was he, was he on drugs? <laughs> 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 oh, but, but, but what he brought out, I think, was, was his imagination of, of looking, for me it looked like a storm going on in his painting, but it, but it has some, some vivid colors that, that uh, direct you to um, imaginative things, but some realistic things as well. Mm -hmm. you know? I mean, it gives you a different perspective you know, like you look at nature differently or look at life differently. If you think about it, he painted that, millions of people have seen that work and been touched by that work in some way. So I believe that art has the power to touch lives and change lives because we all speak that language. You know what I mean? Like when we see something beautiful, we all respond to it. Sometimes we just say, ah. Oh. Yeah, yeah, you're in awe of it. Yeah. 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 yeah, or a beautiful piece of music or a beautiful performance. So we want to make sure that children have access to, to all of those beautiful experiences, you know, and can build their imagination. Well, I believe what you, you believe in saying that is help builds uh, the character of, of a young person. And I think um, on, on the side of, of not being violent and more nonviolent, because mm -hmm. then if yes. you can express, you know, you may be able to communicate, you know, really, I, it, it's not necessary fight. Yes. There's, there's so much more to live for right. that we can, even if we disagree, we can learn to agree about something that is real enough to say, look, we're building a legacy mm -hmm. for not only our, our children, our grandkids, but our ancestors. And, and you know, I, I know you yeah. uh, uh, studied the, the, the ancient arts and, and, mm -hmm. and, the, uh, and the cave art and the different different types of art that, that left you, I guess, with a question and said, Man, how, could, how could they live without a uh, microwave and all of <laughs> that? And you know, the, and but look, the pottery and everything else yeah. that goes along with it—it it, it, it speaks to a civil uh, a civilization that, that is evolving and is getting more creative. Uh, I just was thinking about it because I, I, I watch a lot of science fiction movie. Uh, uh, what's that? That that, that Black Panther. And stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> so I had a to beautiful say, movie. A be yeah. I mean, but that, I mean, there's that, art that, that goes that into was, making oh, yeah, yeah. Great. Yeah. that was great. Mm -hmm. And so it said. 
are we looking for a utopian or are we looking for a reality where people can learn to live together mm -hmm. with the resources that's already available to us? And so, I, you know, I love science fiction because it gives you an idea of, of I'm looking for a peaceful uh, resolution to, to uh, our civilization. You know, say, so, hey, the mm -hmm. animals, they, 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 they're not maiming you. They, they, they're going about their business. I, I, I had an opportunity to see, uh, was it a hooping crane? He was defending his family by, from an alligator by stretching out his wings <laughs> and stuff like that <laughs> and deterring the alligator to go to his family mm -hmm. and say, hey, you know, one of y'all birds going to be my meal. Mm -hmm. he, I mean, Whooping Crane can't be the alligator, I know, I know, but, but apparently he did something to, to intimidate the alligator. The alligator kept on walking. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? That's a good point to make because that's built within nature. Nature. Mm -hmm. And we have that art built within us. Mm -hmm. And all we have to do is tap it and let, get it out and make it realize the fact that, you know, it doesn't have to be like unnatural, and I call it, because to me, crime and everything like that is unnatural, you know. Yes, sir. But um, just the idea of bringing out that natural beauty, that natural artistic stuff, you know. Oh, I'm being creative right now. Yeah, huh? no, I know. <laughs> You're so creative. It's a really good point, because we wouldn't even know about a lot of these ancient cultures if we didn't have That's access true. to the art and the things they created, mm -hmm. ancient Egypt, places like that. Right. You know, they left something behind. We don't know about the wars they fought. We don't, you know, like, so much is missing, but they left art paintings, pottery, that has become a lesson for civilizations to come. So this is something I think every child needs to have in their life. You, you know? know? Not to cut you off, I was just thinking, when you said that, talking about the pottery and everything, it amazes me to look back and to see, now back in China, of mm -hmm. course they have the teacups and everything, and you know that they, teacups don't have handles, you know, it's just like a cup like that. And whoever invented the handle for the teacup, I'm doing the that's coffin. A, that's an that's evolution of civilization. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Like so you're looking at different areas. Right. And stuff. I, I have no problem with drinking But, but, but wait, wait. The point of it is this. But, but the, I love the, what you the, say. The, the, in the Asian culture, they said, if the cup's too hot to handle, it's too hot to drink. That's mm -hmm. why they have it like that. That's why you hold the cup like that, you know? Because if you hold it with a handle like a coffee cup, you might burn, burn your mouth. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but there's a reason why. And so I find myself drinking sometimes coffee like that. I have the handle, but I'll drink it like that just okay. to feel how hot so, it is. So you let your coffee get cold? <laughs> <laughs> oh, warm. Yeah, warm. But, and, I, and, I, and I don't know, I say, well, this cup, this cup has a handle. But in the beginning, it didn't have a handle. Okay. And that's the point I'm making. In the beginning, it didn't have a handle for it to be held on to and everything. But sometimes it's good just to reflect back and to say, this feels good like this. Mm -hmm. A lot of work went into making it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's it's almost time for us to go. And, 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 and Dr. Keys, sorry to see you go. And, and definitely don't be a, str a stranger. You want me to talk about uh, art or anything? Art, yeah, bring some art. Bring, bring, you know, yeah, some bring like some that. Yeah, because it, it's an experience that we need to look at uh, from Who's that? Uh, uh, Banky's, Banky's art people. He he he, he paints on on buildings yeah, and stuff. Yeah, on the buildings. And yeah, people thanks. people take uh, uh, that the hemp. No, they they they. Yeah, they we they, can they, invite a student on next time if you want to we'll, show their We'll get art, a student because so. guess mm -hmm. what? Um, art gives us not only uh, a solace of knowing that we are uh, 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 you know human beings, but we have something to offer. Again, we say to you. Uh, go to a church of your choice and worship the Lord. We always invite you to come on out to True Love Missionary Baptist Church, 2710 Phyllis Street. Worship time is at 8 a.m. in the morning. Come on out and be blessed. Uh, again, we thank God for our co-host, uh, 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 the Reverend Dow Smith. Hopefully, you'll be seeing him more often. Until next time, God bless you is our prayer. <laughs>